Welcome to Blitz Chess number 21. In this series of videos, I walk you through what I think while I'm playing a Blitz game, and I try explaining the ideas and my thought process as well as I can. Your job as a viewer is to pause the video from time to time, maybe ask yourself what will you play in the position I have, and in that way I think we can all learn. Let's go. Okay, we found a game. We're playing with the black pieces. We're going to play knight f6 against d4. Um, c4 was play. I can play c5, which is something that usually I play. But this time I want to play some king's indian stuff. Then we play d6, bishop d7. Very often this transposes to pyrrhic stuff. Um, they go hand by hand, um, if that makes sense. And um, I think my opponent, what my opponent is going for is something called the same-ish. Or same-ish. You can maybe let me know how you pronounce that. I'm going to go c5, trying to create holes in my opponent's position, d5. And as I said, I'm trying to create holes, dark squares, ho dark square holes in my opponent's position. But in exchange, I am giving away some space, um, which means that my pieces won't, won't find good squares very easily. Um, already here, I have to do something I feel pretty, pretty accurate. I don't want to let my pieces die by... Asphyxia. I've seen people play e5 in this kind of positions, closing, thing, closing things off even more as black. But I think I could have played it e5 right away directly, and e5 here would be a, a kind of a waste of the tempo. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to play knight e6, knight c7. Very often in this kind of structures, my knight belongs on c7, preventing knight b5 and getting ready for a b5 in a, a good moment. And that's exactly the reason why my opponent plays e a4. Just making sure everything's okay, and there we go. So a4 preventing b5 ideas. You're going to say, David, b5 now? Like, there's no way that's going to happen. White has three pieces protecting that. But it's, it's something that chess teaches you that. Not because something's happening right now. It's not going to happen in the future. So um, as you said, three pieces are looking at it. But at some point, white may want to move one of them and, and, and stop worrying about b5. So that's why you give that task to a pawn, uh, which happens very often in chess in general. Okay, now I'm going to play b6. This bishop is suffering a little bit. Um, I also thought about taking on, on d5, but not sure about that. I want to play rook e8 as well. That's one of my ideas. Another of my ideas. Hmm. I'm scared of something like bishop e3 or bishop g5, h6, bishop e3, provoking h6. Sometimes it's very useful. Um, I have to give this a think. I also have some, like, let's say, knight g4 ideas. Not now. Although it would be interesting to sacrifice the, the whole piece. But knight g4, of course, after I take on, on e takes d5. Many ideas. The first one I wanted to play is actually taking and playing b6 with bishop a6. And I think I want to do that. I really want to do that. I just have to watch out for f4, e5. If white gets this in a good, in a good way, then I'm pretty much busted. So I'm going to take on d5. White is going for a, an attack in the flank. Or in the center, I should say. So I'm going to react in the queen side with bishop a6. But now that I think about it, bishop b6, e5. This is a little bit worrying. I do have d takes e5. Or actually, bishop takes e6, knight takes e6, and then e5 is actually worrying as well. So maybe I should play some like rook e8. But already there, e5 may be a little bit scary. I could play bishop g4. But I, that, that wasn't part of my plan. E5 is a bit, a bit of a, a bit of a worry. F5 as well. So E5 very often white sacrifices with E5 and follows up with F5, which is very interesting. I'm gonna play rook E8. I'm aware that F7 may be a little bit of a weakness in the future, but for now I think I'm stopping E5. And if F5, then at least the game gets interesting, and I just don't, um, don't just die because many very often when you're getting attacked, the last thing you want to do is just to block as much as you can and, and try to roll up. Um, normally the best kind of defense is active defense. So that's what I'm trying to do with rook e8. White plays h3, which I'm very happy to see. Now I think I can afford to play bishop a6. And very often in this kind of, kind of positions, everything's hanging by a threat. Um, because, as I said, black is running out of space, or has no space at all. If I manage to... Gonna take and play bishop e7. If I manage to find good squares for my pieces in time, then I will be fine. But if white keeps putting the pressure, 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 I won't be able to escape. Uh, I will never be able to escape. 
But for now, I think I like this position. I do have a weakness on a7, but at the same time, white's position or white's center is not as, as overwhelming as it used to be. f5 is an idea. I'm going to play knight d7, trying to go knight c4 and knight, c4 and knight c5. Bishop d4 is an idea, queen h4 is also an idea. f5 is also an idea, but maybe not now. Uh, against f5 from white, now I get the, the e5 square. So I'm pretty happy to get that. Hmm. I wonder if I should go f5 myself. It seems a little bit risky, in, in all honesty. I'm going to play rook c8, which, which allows a little bit of a trick. Uh, if queen takes c7, I play rook a8 back, which may have been missed by my opponent. I could have played rook c7 as well, which was equally interesting, but I think this is winning right away. The only thing I have to be worried about is now white's counterplay. I'm gonna play rook e7, 95. And actually, there's a very funny queen trap. For example, queen, rook e7, queen c6, knight b8 would be trapping the queen. My opponent goes for craziness, which is very sensible, actually. Although against that, hmm. I'm going to sacrifice pieces because in this position, the biggest priority is not material, but activity. So I'm going to just sacrifice the pawn, get this e5 square for my piece. And just try to kill all my opponent's compensation, which is the only thing that hopes, uh, the only thing my opponent is hoping for. He should be five next. If I manage to trade the queens also, everything's going to alleviate a little bit. Very tense. Okay, my opponent goes for that. Give a check. Give another check. I'm going to play c4. Okay. I'm going to play c4. As I said, I just want to get my pieces into the game. That's the only thing I want. Ooh, oh. There's a very nice line. But I don't think it works, unfortunately. I think it, it does work. Look, look at this, look at this. I play this, king takes f2 is forced. Which I'm going to play queen h4. King g1 and queen d4. Intermenso. What's the idea? Well, after... Maybe this doesn't work, actually. I'm going to stop talking for a second. If king h2, I think I have to play knight c5. The problem is that if I take, queen takes d7 is there. Oh, yay, yay. Okay, this is very dangerous. I'm going to sacrifice that before I get absolutely obliterated. Okay, this is now anyone's game. 94 is a threat. I don't want to take on d4. D d6, sorry. There we go. Whoa, that was a close one. So now we get the queen and we should be winning pretty comfortably. Rook d1. Just to trade all the pieces. And make my life easier. Very important, queen d6 back to not let anyone queen. I think I, th I think I can start pushing. Oh, very very interesting try by my opponent, by the way. Thinking f6. Just gonna put all my pawns in, in squares that are not can't, can't be attacked by the bishop, and I'm just going to put my king in a very active square. I'm gonna play in the dark squares, which is very instructive, hopefully, for you, the viewer. I'm going to try to get my king over there. Already here, I think I can think of ideas like... Oh, not that. I'm going to play queen b4. I have to watch out. I'm going to play queen d8, actually. Keeping an eye on that, queen g5 is a very big threat. I think I can play queen, queen g5 now. And queen g3 is unstoppable, even if white promotes. There we go. Good game. Um, that was interesting. I think that... We managed to not get squeezed, uh, which is always the danger with this type of King's Indian uh, defense uh, openings or defenses. <laughs> uh, because you're lacking space, then you, you're always 
hanging in a thread, but I managed to kind of detangle myself. I played this rook c8 idea with rook c7, trying to, trying to defend the a7 pawn from from a very more from a more active square, sorry, which is c7. And um, I think white should have played something like bishop d2 maybe. Although c4 and knight c5 then is interesting. Um, it got very interesting. I think that even though we're up material, it's still important to calculate. I miscalculated this because after queen d4, I just trusted that there was something against king h2. But king h1 is losing uh, a little bit clearer because of queen takes e4, queen takes e7, and queen takes f1 with check. Which is not the case after king h2, so I had to find something else. And uh, it got very crazy. I made a mistake. I made a mistake over here uh, to, to take on c1. Like, rook e4 is not threatening much. If anything, maybe I should have given a check, but then bishop f4 is a problem. Uh, it, it got very crazy, and I, I, I'm, I'm grateful I somehow managed to predict queen d8 and, and prevented this check on g5, which would have allowed a draw for my opponent. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, if you think that I, I said something wrong in this video, you can say, David, in minute number 3 with 47 seconds, you said this, and this is rubbish. Uh, I will be happy to 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 get the constructive feedback as long as it's constructive. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.